I'm here to introduce our vendor presentation. Most of you already know Al Collins, who see him smiling face right now, founder of Mount Albert Scale Lumber and Automation. You may not know that Al was a helicopter pilot and was once chief instructor at Canadian Helicopters. He also flew ENG, news helicopter, for many years before he retired. And that serves as a segue to introduce Jeff Long, who is assisting Al today. Jeff is senior cameraman at CTV, which is the largest Canadian TV network. Uh, Jeff spent about 18 years sitting immediately behind Al in the helicopter, surrounded by monitors, controlling the cameras, and keeping Al in the frame. He was unable to see where he was going other than what the monitors told him. Now that is blind faith. Hopefully today will be a little less stressful. Over to you guys. Thanks, Jerry. <clears throat> well, that sums it up. I think Jeff's one of the bravest guys I know because for, oh, we figure over 5,000 hours, he sat behind me and could never see where I was going. He just trusted that, uh, that I knew. Anyway, tonight I'm just going to briefly uh, introduce the, the slicer, which we've been talking about for quite some time. And it's been actually two years in the making, and we finally started out with a Mark I. I think this is the Mark 17 version. But so maybe if Jeff, who's uh, running the cameras for me here, we can get a couple of close ups. Um, I think maybe I'll just go over some of the points of how it's made and what it does, and then I'll give a few demonstrations. All right, so this is it, the, the oh, ultimation I, I, slicer. I um, let's see where the best. So the, the, one of the secrets to this is in the blade. Um, and if I can turn this blade around, and Jeff can zoom in. So this is, is kind of unique. It's a specialty blade. I buy them 5,000 at a time from Persona down in the States. And it only takes me 12 weeks to get them delivered. It's a chisel blade. It's only got a chamfer on one edge. And that allows it to cut perfectly square on one side. If you look at the top table, you can see that it says square cut side and off cut side. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, before I start cutting up some wood, just there is a rotating fence that goes 45 degrees on either side off zero degrees. It can be clamped down or bolted down, same as the sander. Um, there is a self-healing cutting mat that we have available. We actually ended up buying a small laser to cut these. And then as we hooked it up, it said, do not cut PVC. And these cutting mats are made of five layers of PVC. So we have to be very careful and wear our respirators when we're cutting the cutting mats. However, they are available. Um, we have them in stock. The blades, um, when you buy a sander, it comes with 10 blades. And we also have replacement packages available. Uh, we have them and uh, Tim has them at Fast Tracks. The, the handle design, we, we worked on the pivot point and the design actually is taken from a 69 Camaro four speed shifter, the cutting effort is minimal and it makes some nice cuts. Um, the lament always has been square cutting with, um, with the chop, anything that is designed to cut strip wood. Um, so I'll go, here we go. So this is for, uh, the bigger scale guys. This is a quarter by three eighths basswood. And we'll put that in at zero degrees. Another piece, it makes, can you see that all right? We might have to.
That's quarter by three eighths. Um, we'll take some smaller stuff. I've got I've got this wharf I've been working at off to the side here. Please bear with us for a minute. So a lot of the timbers that I was cutting on the wharf, I, I used my new slicer for. So these are uh, six by eights and the same situation. Um, back to the slicer, we can take again, um, a six by eight and make a perfectly square cut. Cutting angles, uh, a little more difficult. Any carpenters out there will will know that when you try to cut a 45 degree, there's a nice hand, you try to cut a 45 degree on a table saw, it can be a bit of an issue. And that's mainly uh, the forces when you're cutting at an angle are different from one side of the wood to the other because of the angle It also, the blade also wants to draw the wood in. So the same thing happens on a, when you're trying to slice wood. So we'll take a, uh, again, I'm gonna go with the largest stuff first. I'm gonna take and just cut a piece off the edge here. And we'll line that up against a straight. I know, flip it. Sorry? Tilt it up. So we can, all right, and we can flip it over that way. A little bit of a, a little bit of a burr there, where it broke through. But the same thing. You can put those on a we'll trim a little bit off that one. You can put that in a square. And you get a perfectly square cut. Um, let's take just for one more example, take a couple more of those six by eights and we'll cut them. Now, going back to what I was talking about cutting an angle, if, if you cut deep into the wood, um, that um, little bit of a hook, I don't know if you can see that or not. It doesn't cut perfectly square because of that, um, those forces in the cutting on an angle. So that's where the slicer technology comes in, if you like. If you put that back in and you take oh, an eighth of an inch off, you can make a nice clean cut, a nice clean joint. We'll do the same on this one. And we can put them in a square. Like so. Or we can flip them over. And have the same thing on the other side. So that's where the, the terminology slicer or the slicer technology, for lack of a better term, came from. Um, it's just for fun. We'll go back to a piece of this quarter by three eighths on a square cut. And if my 60 cycle shake doesn't let me down, we can stand it up on end. So going back to our pier, there's some 3 8 doweling, basswood doweling I made here. We can trim that. Now you might get a little bit of a burnout at the end there, but maybe not. And we get a square end. We can take a quarter inch piece of dowel 
and do the same thing. Oh, knew that was going to happen. And the same on a piece of quarter by three eighths. Obviously, it cuts smaller wood just just as finely. I tried it on um, the walnut, and I've tried it on um, mahogany. It works fine. I tried it on cherry, yeah, a little rough. Cherry's pretty hard. And one other, look at all the scrap wood I'm getting here. One other little trick, if you're, uh, I don't know how many pieces of planking there is on the on the wharf there, but if you wanted to do planking, now there is a rip, an arm that comes. Can you grab that one, Jeff? It does come with an arm and a stop for repetitive work. Uh, the repeater will fit on this arm if you have a repeater, although um, you don't really need it. It's got a, an arm on there. So I'm going back to this one now, I've got six pieces of two by 10 here which was the planking on this wharf, or sorry, nine pieces of two by 10. And I stacked them up and I can cut them. I'll make some, make some room here. And And I won't bore you by laying them all out, but nice joints all the way around. Now, wood being a uh, natural product, sometimes you get grains going different ways and doing different things. So occasionally, especially on the on the large angle cuts, and we'll just take a 45. And this is a particularly hard piece of 12 by 12 I found. So on some of the larger angle cuts um, on a very coarse grain or a very hard grain piece of wood, they may not just go together 100%. But I got this other neat tool. So literally a couple of turns. And you get a perfect joint. So there it is, the long awaited for slicer. Um, there's a lot more information available. We, it's on the website today. It's available for purchase as of today. Some of the fine tuning, some of the paperwork didn't come yet. It will be here in the next couple of days. So they'll be available for delivery by Friday, if not Monday. And there's three videos that Jeff and I have been working on today that explain in a little more detail um, some of the nuances of the slicer. So if there's any questions, comments, um, please. I'm here. Thanks, Al. Um, I picked up mine, as you know, on uh, Sunday, and I'm I'm looking forward to finding a reason to uh, to slice something up with it other than my fingernails. Um, so, <laughs> questions and comments. Um, I had uh, two, 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 two. How well does it cut small lumber? Um, wait a minute. I need to go back a bit more. Lots of comments here. Okay. Uh, the only thing it doesn't do that the chopper does is to have a stop for repeat cuts, but it does. We've uh, seen that, I think, now. Uh, yeah. I hope that answers Phil's question. Yeah. The second one that's right in the front at the bottom of the screen there, you can see the uh, the stop that's adjustable. Uh, how long is that stop, Al? 12 inches. 12 inches. Okay. So it should be adequate for most use. Um, the How well does it cut small lumber like two by sixes in HO scale? Um, HO scale. Well, here's a, here's a three by six in O scale. We can just, um, I concentrated on the heavier stuff cause it's more awkward. Um, so here's a three by six in, in O scale and it cuts like literally you can just do that 
it cuts. And then we'll, um, maybe we'll put it on here. All right, cuts perfectly. Yeah, Absolutely that blade perfectly. is that blade is pretty special. I think it. Uh, what happens? I did cut some small stuff with my uh, the first generation one I had, and it did uh, it did fine on the small stuff. I was concerned it might crush it, but it doesn't. No, and I guess I'm sorry. That's a point. Um, again, that's so that's a, a three by three by six in in O scale. Um, we could maybe I don't know if, if we can get a close up of that or not. We'll try. That looks pretty good. Yeah. The um, smaller the smaller stuff, it, um, it it just cuts through like butter. I was I was cutting. Um, well, if uh, some of the guys that that know this project, I've been working on. I, it's an O scale um, building on a wharf, but I did all the siding um, board by board, and I was cutting H O one by tens for the siding on this. And I cut all that um, on this. So that's HO one by 10, which is what? What's a one inch in HO? 15 thou roughly? And 12 it, and a half. Yeah. Hmm. Cut beautifully on the real small stuff. Larry McDonald has commented that he bought one for his wife on the weekends just so he could use it. Um, Dave Woodhead points out it's great on celery. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that helps a lot. <laughs> Uh, Keith, Keith's wife wants to steal it for the kitchen. Um, Alan Breikoff is looking for repeaters. I believe you can get repeaters direct from um, from Ultimation, but also from uh, from Fast Tracks. Yep. Um, price. One seventy five. Thank you. One seventy five US. And um, what about shipping? And like you say, and that's uh, shipping's free, and they are up on the website now. Shipping free in North America, right? North America. And that okay. surprisingly enough includes Hawaii and Alaska and cool. uh, Puerto Rico as well. I think. Okay. We probably don't have time. Jeff has asked to do a demo on the repeater, but if you go on to uh, Al's website, the Ultimation website, there's a really good demo <clears throat> on how the repeater works. Yep. Um, question, does it cut styrene? Yes, it does. Yeah. And your website, I believe is ultimation.com. CA. Ultimation.ca. Thank you. Someone was asking that question. Um, Daryl says, can you reverse the blade for left-handers? <laughs> we had that question on Sunday, didn't we? Well, actually you can. Um, you, you can, you can, if you look at the, uh, I don't encourage it. However, if you look at the, uh, the stop on here, just bear with us for a minute. Yeah. This stop is designed to go either way. And on the fence, you can see that the rail can go on the other side. The problem is that if you wanna use it freestanding, um, you can only sort of balance it in one direction. So you noticed all the, all I was doing with it this evening was all freestanding. I was working with it. And that's because the way it's balanced, it will take a force on the left-hand side. If you work on the other side, it's a, it's a little tippy. So you would need to bolt it down, but it's designed Definitely. to be bolted down. Definitely need to fasten that down. I understand if you're gonna work on, from the other side, you'd also have to reverse the blade, right? That's right. You've got to have that, that specialty type blade. Like I say, we have to buy them 5,000 at a time. Yeah. That is only designed to cut square on one side. So you would have to reverse the blade to work uh, on the other side. Lori McLean um, is asking, is the blade replaceable? And obviously you've shown us that that is. And um, you supply, what did you supply? 10 blades with each, uh, each uh, uh, slicer? Yeah, each, yeah. each, each uh, slicer comes with 10 blades. Great. And we have replacement packages of blades available right. as well. Fast Tracks has them as well, but they they come in packages of 10. But it, there's a word of caution here. These blades are exactly the same dimensions and exactly the same thickness as utility knife blades, but they're not. The, a utility knife blade will not work. They call them trapezoid blades. 
that a utility knife blade is beveled on both sides, uh, it just will not cut. It'll, it'll just mash the wood. Okay. So you have to use the specialty blades. And like I say, they're readily available from, from either us or from Fast Tracks. So we're running a little short on time. Um, someone asks if it works with evergreen styrene. I would imagine it does. No problem yep. cutting styrene. Yep. Okay. No, it does. And the problem if you get too big in the styrene, it'll break out on the bottom, to be honest. The smaller styrene is fine. But if you start trying to cut quarter inch styrene or, or 316 styrene, um, it just is not forgiving. So as the blade, the deeper the blade goes into the wood, it just starts to set or into the styrene. There's nothing to absorb it. So it wants to separate. And as soon as the bottom part of the styrene gets weak enough, it'll it'll pop off. So it'll, it'll shatter on the bottom. Yeah. But the styrene is easily fixed on a sander. Yep, exactly. Uh, John pointed out that he just bought one. Uh, Phil said um, he presumes the offcuts would have to be squared up. Yeah, of course, because the blade is not symmetrical. Yep. So the offcut side would not be square. Um, and Craig yep. said, can Canadians buy you in from you in Canadian dollars? I believe that's not the case, if I remember correctly. Unfortunately, uh, with e-commerce situations, you're only allowed one currency. Um, yeah, and lo logistics dictate that the largest market is an American market. So I have no choice but to do everything in American funds. But Shopify, that's who I deal with. I deal with Shopify. They automatically, uh, they just take American funds and change it. So. Yeah. Okay. And that's the end of our questions. Um, <laughs> I'd like to thank you both for your, uh, for your presentation. And uh, thanks to off-camera Jeff for his, uh, for his technical, technical wizardry and the, and the thumbs up to you too, buddy. <laughs> Over to you, Russ. <clears throat> Thank you, Al and Jeff. Excellent presentation. And uh, I guess I got to get one of them. <laughs> <laughs>